1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 7. It says, Then on that day David delivered first this psalm to thank the Lord into the hand of Asaph and his brethren. Give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him, sing songs unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name, let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in his strength, seek his face continually. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O ye seed of Israel, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen ones, he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. Be ye mindful always of his covenant, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, even of the covenant which he made with Abraham, and of his oath unto Isaac, and hath confirmed the same to Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant saying, Unto thee will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance, when you were but few, even a few, and strangers in it. And when they went from nation to nation, and from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong, yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my heart prophets no harm. Sing unto the Lord all the earth, sing forth from day to day his salvation, declare his glory among the heathen, his marvelous works among all nations. For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He also is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the people are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Glory and honor are in his presence. Strength and gladness are in his place. Give unto the Lord, ye kindreds of the people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. The world also shall be stable, that it be not moved. Let the heavens be glad, and let the earth rejoice. And let men say among the nations, The Lord reigneth. Let the sea roar, and the fullness thereof. Let the fields rejoice, and all that is therein. Then shall the trees of the wood sing out the presence of the Lord, because he cometh to judge the earth. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. And say ye, Save us, O God of our salvation, and gather us together, and deliver us from the heathen, that we may give thanks to thy holy name, and glory in thy praise. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel forever and ever. And all the people said, Amen, and praise the Lord. You wonder why we say Amen a lot? Right, that's why. Yep. Well, that's what they did back in the Old Testament. That's good. God's people said, Amen. Amen. That's right. <laughs> so here uh, we have the text verse, verse 29. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. I'd like to continue the message from last week speaking about the beauty of the Lord. This week, the beauty of holiness. Mm. Of course, we know holiness speaks of purity of heart experiencing freedom from sin. I'm so glad God has freed us from sin. Amen. We're no longer in bondage to sin. God sanctifies us. Uh, holiness also speaks of uh, sacredness and being separated unto God. And I know it may be difficult for some of you to make some separations in your life, but mm -hmm. it's going to be good for you spiritually if you do that. Right. Yes. Maybe there's some people in your life that you've been close to and you know that they've been a bad influence. And God's telling you, listen, you need to separate. Yeah. That's a good thing, okay? Because that's a work of holiness mm. in your heart. That's right. The first mention in the Bible of holiness, the word holiness, is in Exodus chapter 15, verse number 11. I mentioned earlier about when I was talking to Nick about the going through the Red Sea. The Israelites had just passed through the Red Sea. They were on the other side. And they sang a song. They sang the song of Moses, as it, as it was called. And in that, they, they mention how the Lord is glorious in holiness. Hmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. Now, in these previous chapters of First Chronicles, the Ark of God uh, here is mentioned a number of times. Uh, Actually, chapter 16 is when they brought the Ark of God into Jerusalem. 
David had prepared a place for it, and he had wanting he'd been wanting for some time to move it to Jerusalem. The Ark of God uh, was moved many times from its original location at Shiloh in the tabernacle. You remember the tabernacle, the tent that they had out in the wilderness before they arrived into Canaan. Well, when they came into the promised land into Canaan, they made a place for it uh, in Shiloh. And there it remained for a very long time. Uh, but in 1 Samuel chapter number 4, Israel at this time is doing battle with their enemies, the Philistines. The Philistines in the Bible is a type of our flesh. The Philistines never go away. Do you notice mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Right. I know. Until so the day we die, Brother Joe, we'll have our flesh to deal with. Mm. It's always there. You know? It is. Self is always trying to rise up, isn't it? Mm. Yep. The Philistines were a pain in the neck. Yep. And uh, here they're fighting against the Philistines again. Samuel the prophet, this is back in 1 Samuel chapter 4. Samuel the prophet, he's just recently been established to be a prophet of the Lord. The Israelites lose the battle against the Philistines. 4,000 of the army of Israel are slain by the enemy. It's a, a great defeat. Then the elders of Israel had an idea. They said, instead of you know going to the, the prophet of God, instead of going to Samuel, and inquiring of the Lord, which is what they should have done, we do notice several times in Scripture where people got in trouble when they didn't inquire of God. Have you mm -hmm. noticed that in your reading mm -hmm. right. in the Old Testament? Yes. We need to learn from the Old Testament. Yes. Yeah. You know? Stop making decisions without asking God first. Mm -hmm. You know? God, I need some direction. God, I need some guidance. Mm -hmm. Lord, will you please show me what, what to do here? God is faithful. Amen? God That's guides right. His children. Yes. You have the Word of God and the Spirit of God, right? both of which he uses to guide us. And so they didn't inquire of God. And so the elders of Israel, they had this idea. They say, now listen, let's go and let's get the ark of God from Shiloh and let's bring it down here to the battle. And they were sure that this would bring them the victory. Of course, it didn't. It didn't work. This reminds me of a verse from our Bible reading I believe this was in today's reading, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 5. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Mm. It does no good to be religious, which is mm. coming to God on your terms. That's what right. they were doing. Doing things on their terms. Salvation, or we could say victory, only happens on God's terms. Right. Salvation yes. in your life um, only happened right. on God's terms. That's right. The only way to have victory from day to day right. is on God's terms. We can have the victory. We can enjoy That's the good. victory, but it can only happen on God's terms. we got to find out wow. what are God's terms for me to have the victory every day. That's so good. All right. Right. We find that out. We obey that. We do that. Yep. We'll have, we'll have the victory. Amen. We'll wow. have we'll have His wonderful right. light shining down upon us. Yep. That's we'll have that so that hope of Him yeah. swelling up in our soul. Yep. We'll be filled with His love. Amen. And everywhere we go, it'll be just oozing out of us. It'll be just <laughs> <laughs> because we're doing it on His terms. That's good. Amen. Good. God bestows His grace. Salvation is by grace. Right. Right? That's right. For by grace are ye saved through faith. Yes. And that not of works, lest any man should boast. As well, living in the victory is by the grace of God. God cannot be manipulated. Right. Ooh, right. Mm -hmm. Let me repeat that. God cannot be manipulated. That's Amen. right. You may be able to manipulate people. People that you think that can be manipulated. Yeah. God. But you can't do that with God. That's so true. That's right. The elders of Israel thought they could use the ark of God as a good luck charm. Mm. People think the same way today. 
Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. Now, the ark does represent the presence and power of God. They were right about that. You know, it's there above the mercy seat that God would commune with Moses, the leader of God's people, during their journeys in Canaan, uh, to Canaan when they were in the wilderness. And so, yes, it does represent uh, the power of God, the presence of God. But it's a representation of that. Mm. The ark itself is not God. Mm -hmm. right? It's just where he would meet with Moses. It's just where he would meet and um, commune with them. And even though the church represents the presence and power of God, being in a church building can't save you. That's right. Good. That's being good. in a church building can't give you the victory in your life. Being a church member doesn't make you a better Christian or you know, being faithful to church. Even though the Bible represents the presence and power of God, knowing a lot about the Bible right. can't save you. Right. Amen. Um, knowing a lot about the Bible and being faithful in your Bible reading doesn't make you a victorious Christian. That's right. The question is, do you know the God of the Bible? Mm. The question is, do you have a personal relationship with the God of the Bible? Right. Is he your Lord and Savior? I make no, no apologies for saying that. Amen. Is he your Lord? Lord. Right. Amen. Amen. Paul said, thou shalt confess Amen. with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Is that not what he said? Yes, it is. Lord, Lord, you can't right. argue with the Bible. I don't care what people say. Nope. Amen. Is he your Lord and Savior? Is he your master from day to day? Does he right. tell you what to do? Right. Do you allow him to tell you what Ooh, to do? That's good. If you're saved, he should be telling you what to do. Amen. Amen. And you got no problem with that. <laughs> that's right. right. That's yeah. right. Are you living in his favor? David said, in his favor is life. Amen. Amen. Right. Psalm 30, verse 5. We can know and experience the presence and power of God in our life, but it will only happen when we do things God's way. We must right. do things God's way. God wants things done a certain way. Don't you see this in math? Biology, physics, chemistry, mm -hmm. all these things of life. Things have to be done a certain way if we're, in that's order for right. them to work out. That's right. That's right. In order for you to get the answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. God's that way. Yes, he is. Yes. yes, he's the same way. Very good. Yes. You can't just do any algebra equation no. any old way you want to mm -mm. and that's come up with right. the answer. It has to no. be done a certain way. That's right. <laughs> when you're mixing things in a chemistry lab, you have to be really careful to mix things in just the right way. Or you could blow yourself up. That's right. The same truth applies spiritually. Mm. The lost person must repent of their sins. They must turn from their way. They must realize God is right and I'm wrong. There's no hope in me. Mm. I'm guilty before God, deserving of hell. Amen. My sin, my rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft or black magic. My stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. The lost person must believe with all their heart with no reservations in Christ's death, burial, and resurrection, and his shed sinless blood for their redemption. It must be a total surrender to Christ. The lost person must then call upon the Lord for salvation. They must pray and ask the Lord to save them. And if they mean it with all their heart, God will save them. Amen. And then they will have a time and place yep. when they met God. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's it. When they received him. That's so amen. important, amen? Yes, it is. Vital. Some of you have done your testimony. You've written out your testimony. Mm -hmm. What a blessing. Oh, it's been a blessing. Oh. To go back in your yep. mind to that time and place. Yes. I know. It's so when you good. made things right yeah. with the Lord. When you received Him amen. into your heart. You called upon the Lord. Precious and He gloriously saved your soul. Amen. Likewise, the saved person must love the Lord, their God, with all their heart, with all their soul, and with all their strength. Mm -hmm. God expects this. Yes. Amen? Mm -hmm. No if ands, buts about it. Yeah. Right. This is what God expects. Right. Things to be done in a particular way, in a certain way, a specific mm -hmm. way. Right. The saved person is expected by God to obey His word. And the Spirit's leading. And the saved person must trust God completely. Do we trust Him completely? 
fully with all our heart. That's good. Now, back here in 1 Chronicles, David wanted the ark to be moved to Jerusalem, right? Mm -hmm. That was a good thing because yes. David had taken over Jerusalem. It was previously occupied by the Jebusites. There was lots of ites in Canaan. And the Jebusites had, they still held on to the, what was known as back in the day as a fort. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem was a fort. Yeah. And it was a stronghold. Mm -hmm. Just like we have strongholds spiritually in our lives many mm -hmm. times, it, we've allowed the flesh to have a stronghold. Right. And it's, it's a tough place. Right. It's a really tough place because it's just, it's got so much mm. a hold over us. It's so, it's mm -hmm. a stronghold like Jerusalem it was. Is. And so throughout, you know, the time of the judges and you remember reading the, the book of Judges, right? All of that. And um, yeah, Jerusalem was still held by the Jebusites. Israelites did not have that, that area. They did not have that city. David takes the city, it becomes the capital of Israel, and by the way, it's still the true capital of Israel today. That's right. So, back to David here. He, he wants to bring the ark here in First Chronicles, um, you know, to Jerusalem. But as you know, he does it the wrong way at the yeah. first. Remember they put it on a new cart? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's back in uh, chapter 13, verse number 7. And they carried the ark of God in a new cart. New cart? What? Mm -hmm. What? A cart? Right. You say, but Pastor, it was a new cart. You know? It was brand spanking new. And, um, yeah, it may have looked nice. It may have looked pretty and, yeah. and seemed nice. And a lot of times, spiritually speaking, you know, it can seem like we're doing a good thing and... And we think it's a great idea, you know? Yeah. But God says, no, that ain't right. Right. Mm -hmm. That's not the way you should be doing mm -hmm. it. Yeah. We didn't go inquiring of the Lord. We didn't go to the Word of God. We mm -hmm. didn't pray about it like we should have. Wow. Truly wanting whatever God wanted, right. you know? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can pray about things, but really we've got our mind already made up, and we just that want God true. to agree with us. Yep. Oh, okay, I'm going to pray about this, but I'm hoping God's going to agree with me. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> you know? How do we yeah. pray? Yeah. When we pray, yeah. That's right. <laughs> let's be totally we, surrendered to yeah. whatever yeah. God yeah. wants. Right. And not have any already preconceived ideas. And so David, he does a good thing the wrong way. You know? Now, notice verse 8. 1 Chronicles chapter 13, verse 8. And David and all Israel played before God with all their might. So they're excited, right? Okay, even though they're doing something the wrong way, they're excited. <laughs> and they sing. Yeah. You can sing. And yeah. it's, you're yeah. singing, and you're trying to be happy in the Lord, mm -hmm. but it's not being received. Right. Right. Yeah. It's not being done in the beauty of holiness. I hope you're starting to kind of grasp a little bit what the, where the message yes. is going today. Yeah. We've, we've got to be doing things in the right way, in God's way. Yes. A certain way, a specific Amen. way, in order for it to be received of God. Right. It's good. This, this rejoicing here was in vain. Mm -hmm. I know they were excited because, hey, look, we're taking the ark back to Jerusalem. But yeah. I'm telling you, it was in vain. It was. You know? It wasn't acceptable to God because they weren't doing it God's way. Yeah, that's right. So God's blessing wasn't on it. Yeah. Sometimes we can maybe try and uh, help ourselves out spiritually. We, we want to sing or we want to praise God, but we're not coming to God the right way. We know there's right. still some sin in our life that we haven't repented of. We know there's something we're mm -hmm. still hanging on to or right. maybe friends or something or right. yes. whatever it is. You know? Yep. Like and we're not God. coming to God with a pure heart. Amen. Well, then God's not going to bless that. He's not going to accept that, that offering of praise. Yeah. Mm. That's good for Because That's we're right. not doing it His way. That's right. Do you understand yeah. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. 
Now, don't get me wrong. God wants you to sing. Right. Yes. He wants you to praise mm -hmm. Him. He wants right. you to worship Him. But we got to yeah. do it God's way. Amen. In order for it to be acceptable. Right. Yeah. And good. so David and Israel play before God with all their might. You can even do it with all your might. <laughs> yeah, God, I'm really trying, you know. Yeah. And But no, it must be done God's way. Hey, they had harps and psalteries and timbrels and cymbals oh, yeah. and trumpets. And, you know, <laughs> they were going all out. Yeah. But God's blessing wasn't on it. And a man died because they didn't do exactly. it God's way. Yeah. Right. What That's right. Well, David in chapter 15 gets right with God, amen? He gets it right. Thank God when we get it right. Chapter 15, verse 2 says, Then David said, You know what? None ought to carry the ark of God but the Levites. Oh, oh. yeah. For them hath the Lord chosen to carry the ark of God and to minister unto him forever. David got it right, amen? That's right. good. Praise yes, God when we, when we get things right. And so what happens? Let's look uh, in verse number 28. So this is like a replay of chapter 13. We read over there when they were uh, had the ark in a new cart, the ark of God, the ark of the covenant, and yeah. Dave and all Israel play before God with all their might and all that, right? And the singing, the harps, and all that and stuff, right? Okay, this is a replay. Now they're doing it again mm -hmm. the right way. Amen. The way in which is pleasing oh, to God. Good. Notice the difference. It says in verse 28, And thus all Israel brought up the ark of the covenant of the Lord with shouting. Mm -hmm. You don't hear anything about any shouting back in chapter 13. And with the sound of the cornet and the trumpets and the cymbals, making a noise with psalters and harps. Verse 29, It came to pass, as the ark of the covenant of the Lord came to the city of David, that Michael, the daughter of Saul, looking out at the window, saw King David dancing and playing, and she despised him in her heart. You don't see anything about dancing back in chapter 13 either. Amen. <laughs> yeah. They were shouting and praising God, amen, yeah. in the spirit. In the spirit, right. yeah. And they were dancing right. in the spirit, amen. Oh, they got happy in the Lord. Truly happy, I believe. Amen. And God's blessing was on it. Amen. When they did it God's way. Yes. Oh, will we do things God's way? Hmm. That's good. When we get our eyes and when we see the beauty of holiness, yes. it's a wonderful thing. It is. You know? See, Pastor Todd, can you see holiness? Mm. Well, maybe not, but I believe you can see the effects of it. That's good. Just yeah. like we can't see God as we look around today in this beautiful day, but we see the effects of God. Right. We see the effects of God everywhere. That's right. <laughs> That's good. He made all this stuff. Amen. He made this beautiful day. We know that. We see the effects of Him. That's right. And we can see the effects of holiness in a person's life, can we not? When a person, when a child of God, when they truly see the beauty of holiness and doing things God's way, yes, it'll bubble to the surface. Right. Those fruits of the Spirit will be overflowing in the life of a believer, walking in the beauty of holiness. That love, that joy, that peace, that long-suffering. You know what that means? Long-suffering? That means I can't make you mad. Long-suffering. Oh, how we need that wonderful fruit. Fruit of the Spirit. Gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, all these things. Mm -hmm. They'll bubble out of us. They'll ooze out of us. That's good. As we walk in the beauty good. of His holiness. See, Pastor Todd, is holiness really beautiful? Oh, it's a beautiful thing. When our heart is right with God, that's a beautiful thing. Yes. When we have victory over sin, that's a beautiful thing. Amen. When we have confidence with God, that's a beautiful thing. Yes, it is. When right. we have hope in our soul, that's a beautiful thing. Amen. Right. When we have joy in the Lord, that's a beautiful thing. Lord, that is Amen. so true. Good. Oh, yes. It is beautiful. God's holiness is beautiful. 
the spiritual things of God are more beautiful than the fading physical things of this life. Mm -hmm. The things of this life, they all fade, right? They all grow old and pass away. That's right. I'm reminded of uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust. We know all about rust in Canada, amen. <laughs> where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Mm -hmm. And another passage in 2 Corinthians chapter number 4 and verse 18. God's Word says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And then chapter 5 and verse number 7, For we walk by faith, not by sight. Oh, may we get a glimpse of the beauty of His holiness today. Mm -hmm. oh. Doing things His way and how wonderful that is and what blessings come as a result. Another good verse in Colossians chapter 3. Colossians 3 verse 2. Set your affection on things above and not on things on the earth. Mm. Oh, our affections many times are too much mm -hmm. on this earth. Yes. yes. And not on the things above. And 1 John chapter 2 and verse 17. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Uh, Amen. Amen. Now there's two areas in which I'd like to bring to your attention in regards to the beauty of holiness. Number one is our worship, and we see that here, if you're still there in 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 29. Give unto the Lord the glory due his name, bring an offering, and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Our, our worship, okay? This area is so important. Our adoration, our honors to, our reverence to God with the highest respect must be done in the beauty of holiness. It's the only way it's accepted by God. If you look back at the high priest Aaron in under the Levitical law in Leviticus chapter 16, you see there all the procedures, all of the requirements that God had for them as a priest of God. We are priests of God right. today. Right. Yes, we are. Sure. Are we not? Yes. Right. If Aaron had not followed the proper requirements by God, if he had not cleansed himself, if he had not done the offerings in the particular way, um, when he offered the, the, the sin offering and the burnt offering, if he had not done it God's way, it would not have been received. That's right. right. God's blessing would not have been upon it. Mm. Why did God bless it? Because Aaron did it the right way. Right. That's good. The yes. way God required it to be done. God is very specific. I didn't say God's hard to please. I said God is specific. Yes. <laughs> right. right. Okay. That's right. Don't let the oh, devil whisper good. in your ear. Exactly. Don't listen to your yeah, flesh. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Because it's going to say, oh, yeah. when Pastor says good. God specific, he means God's hard to please. No, I didn't say nope. that. Okay, that's a lie. Don't believe that that's lie, good. Christian. I just said God specific. What? You're okay with driving within specific requirements, are you not? Yeah. Yep. We have to stay under the speed limit when we drive. We have to stop at red lights and stop signs. We have to yield at intersections to people who are turning. Um, different things like that, right? We don't run over pedestrians. Uh. At least we shouldn't. Amen? We, we have to follow these procedures. That's and good. do we do we not get accustomed to them? Yeah. We just normally follow them, right? Mm -hmm. We should. Right. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. We get in the habit of it. It should be habit for us as God's people, to Absolutely. follow God's requirements. Amen. And when we do, there's blessings. Amen. Wonderful blessings. Yeah. Amen. God receives us. He receives our worship. That's good. But only then. Right? Yes. Otherwise, there's consequences. And God does not receive it. 
First Peter chapter 2, verse 5. Let me read a verse there to you. First Peter chapter 2, verse 5 says, Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood, like Aaron. Okay? It's talking about us today. And holy priesthood. And so we need to take our spiritual walk with God just as seriously as Aaron took his office as a wow. high priest back in the day when he went before God uh, in the in the tabernacle and the holy place and the holies of holies and before the Ark of the Covenant where the Shekinah glory of God dwelt there above the mercy seat and wow. he would offer the blood of the lambs and uh, the offerings for the people for the sins of Israel right I mean, think about that, how he must have been so very careful, you know, to make sure he followed all of God's requirements for that, because if he didn't, he'd die. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that? Pretty careful. Remember they had the little bells at the bottom of the high, yes. high priest's garment, you know? That let them know that he was still alive. Oh, I think I still hear the bells. Yeah. Okay, he's, he's good. He's okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Had to take it real seriously. How seriously do we take this? That's right. Are we truly walking in the beauty of holiness before God? Yeah. As a priest, we are the priests of God today. Mm -hmm. Again, 1 Peter 2, verse 5. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices. We're offering up sacrifices. We have to do it God's wow. way. Otherwise, it will not be received. Wow. Acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. It's all by Jesus. Amen. That's right. good. And then let me just mention also something else. A second area I like to bring to your attention in regards to the beauty of holiness. Number two, not only our worship, but our praise. Mm. Go to Second Chronicles chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Uh, this is now during the time of Jehoshaphat. He was a good king. Uh, reigned over Judah or the southern kingdom. And here they have uh, these armies. Several of them, I think, coming up against him. And uh, God tells him it's going to be alright. And they do things God's way in the beauty of holiness. And notice here what it says in verse 21, Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that, and that should praise the beauty of holiness. Wow. As they went out before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Amen. When we praise God, let's be sure to extol the beauty mm. of holiness. Wow. Not just praise Him because He's been so good to us, mm. but more than that, to praise the beauty of His holiness. Wow. That's good. You'll get that in a minute. Yeah. Let that sink in a little bit. I like that. Not just praise Him because He's been so good to us. Not just praising God because things are going good right now. Is that the only time we sing? Is that the only time we praise mm. God is when things are going good? Oh. No, it must be more than that. Let's praise the beauty of His holiness. Oh, that's true worship, isn't it? Wow. Back in 1 Peter, let me just read you another verse there to go along with this thought. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Again, it reminds us again, God says you're priests now. You've got to act and operate in a certain way. And holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. Let's praise the beauty of His holiness. Amen. This will make our praise, our rejoicing, our song richer and fuller and deeper than 
ever before. And then things will happen. Like in Jehoshaphat's day, when the Lord set ambushments against their enemies. Wouldn't you like to see that in your life? God to right. set ambushments for you? God to fight your battles? Wow. Yeah. The prophet like said that. to Jehoshaphat back in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15, The battle is not yours, but God's. Yeah. <laughs> Do you believe that, Kristen? Your battles are God's battles. Amen. He will fight them for you. That's but only as you submit to him and do things right. his way. That's right. right. As we praise the beauty of his holiness, not just because he's been good to me That's today good. or last week or done this and that or whatever, you know. He answered my prayer, so now I'm going to praise him. No, let's praise him for the beauty of his holiness. Things will happen like when Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. <laughs> and the Lord caused a great earthquake. The foundations were shaken and all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. The power of God fell. Right. This is what we must have. Amen. The convicting power of God to fall upon lost souls. Mm. That's what we need. That's what we need to pray for. And when it happens to them, they'll say, just like the Philippian jailer, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? <laughs> Amen. How wow. I long to hear those words or something similar. Yeah. Yes, the holiness of the Lord is beautiful. Worship the Lord and the beauty of holiness. Praise the beauty of holiness. Sometimes if our outside was as dirty as our inside, we'd be ashamed, wouldn't we? Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Ugh. But because it's our inside and nobody knows, and nobody sees it, we think we're okay. Mm -hmm. No, we're not okay. God knows. Amen? Yeah. And that's what matters. That's not walking in the beauty of holiness. That's not walking in purity of heart before God, is it? Oh, no. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. I'll end with just a few more verses here and we're all done. 2 Corinthians, go with me to chapter number 7. We're priests, amen? Yes. yes. We need to wow. act like it. That's so, good. We need to live like it. Yes. Amen. We need to worship like right. it. Wow. We need to praise like it. Man. Second yeah. Corinthians chapter 7, verse 1. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves, us priests mm -hmm. of God, from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Wonderful verses. Amen. Yeah. First Thessalonians chapter four. We've been looking at First Thessalonians on uh, our midweek service. I mentioned it before about uh, verse number four. First Thessalonians four four that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Mm. Paul challenges them in verse one that the exhortation they received of how they ought to walk and please God so you would abound more and more. Are we abounding? Are we growing? Mm -hmm. cool. I pray that you are. I pray that we're learning from our errors, right. from our mistakes, right. and from our past, and, yes. and to move on right. amen, so to important. spiritual maturity and not stay where we amen. are. Because if we stay where we are, we're just going to slide back. Yeah. yeah. We're yeah, just going right. to backslide. So we must that's be progressing. Good. God is all about progression. Yeah. God is all about us growing in His grace. And so Paul challenges the church there at Thessalonica that they would abound more and more. For you know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus, he says in verse 2. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should ab abstain from fornication. And that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Mm. This world is full of sexual perversion and yes. 
fornication. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. all around us, right? That's right. It can affect it us. Yes, it can. Oh, may God help us yeah. to abstain mm -hmm. from these things. Amen. And know how to possess our vessel in sanctification and honor, not yes. in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, and that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we have also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto what? Holiness. holiness. Unto holiness. holiness. Amen. Holiness. His beauty of holiness. Wow. And one last passage here, Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12, verse number 11. Now no chastening for the present seem to be joyous. God has a way of getting our attention. Yes. If you're his child, he will chasten you. <laughs> but grievous. Nevertheless, after it, it yieldeth the peaceful fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet. Lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. God wants to heal you today. Yes, he does. Amen. That's good. Maybe you're dealing with some things, you know, and you're mm -hmm. feeling depressed about some things or discouraged about some things. God wants to heal yeah. your heart. Yeah, he wants amen. to lift you up today. He wants to give you hope. Amen. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. The grace of God is there. It's for you. It's, it's available. Right? Amen. We can walk in the beauty right. of the Lord. We can walk in the beauty of holiness. And we can reap the benefits of it. But only doing it God's way. Mm -hmm. Only following God's requirements. Looking diligent, lest any man fail the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness spring up to trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. That's what... Satan wants us to do, right? Yes. Give up our, our rights, our birthright with yes. God, being adopted now into his family and all the rights that we have as God's children to live in the victory, to right. be full of his joy and his love and his peace all the time. Satan wants you, the world wants you, the flesh wants you to give that up yeah. for a morsel. You be careful of those morsels that Satan oh. offers you. You be careful of those oh, morsels right. that the world offers you. Yeah, yeah. Pleasure and sin for a season, you be careful of that. Mm. It'll lead you away from the Lord. That's right. It'll cause you not to be able to worship God in the right. beauty of holiness. It'll cause you not to <laughs> praise God in yeah. the beauty of holiness. Right. And so your praise, your worship will not be accepted of God. How do we expect God to shine upon us? His faith. How do we expect God to build in us His hope? How do we expect God to fill us with His love unless we walk with Him in the beauty of holiness?